Hey guys, it's Jerem here on Mini Music Meltdown, back with another video. What do you have for today, guys? It's the next installment of my top 10 albums of each year. I started back in 1970, working my way through till present time. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you like these top 10 lists, uh, definitely check out my playlist. Uh, from 1970 to 79, I only did top 5. And then when I broke into the 80s, I bumped it up to top 10 because then it was going to be near impossible to pick only 5. And this year was one of the hardest years. It had so many iconic albums, some really, really great uh, landmark albums from some bands. But overall, there was either in some, even some other albums from bands I really like that were on this year that were just so solid and really good. Um, there's four or five that really stood out as the top five or six, um, but there was a ton of a ton of good albums this year. Uh, so let's jump right in, guys. So the video is not too long. Um, so starting at number. Uh, 10, I got it reversed here. I have Overkill's second album, Taking Over. One of the most consistent bands in Thrash. Uh, I love this album, one of my favorites from them. Um, if standout tracks for me would be uh, Deny the Cross, Wrecking Crew, and Power Surge. And at number nine, I'm gonna go with Exodus, uh, Pleasures of the Flesh, one of my favorite Thrash bands. Uh, Exodus and Testament are probably my two favorites of all time. Um, this is their second studio album as well. Love this as well. Didn't quite make it higher on the, on the list, but um, it had to make my top 10 for sure. And with songs like Deranged, uh, Parasite, and uh, Brain Dead, really good stuff. And this might be surprising for some people that this album's uh, this low on my list, but at number uh, eight, I have Abigail uh, by King Diamond. I uh, fucking love King Diamond, excuse me. <coughs> I fucking love King Diamond. Um, this is the iconic album, a must-have in any collection, really classic album. Um, it's probably my favorite King Diamond album, or top two or three for sure. Maybe I think my favorite. Um, I'm more of a fan of Merciful Fate. I think that's why this is a little bit lower on my list. Uh, but I really enjoy this album. I know his vocals are a little bit to get used to. Uh, but once you get past the falsettos, which he does amazing, uh, really good, good guitar work on this album, good leads, really good solos, just a solid killer album. A must have in any collection. <clears throat> and standard tracks for this, I'd have to go with uh, Funeral, uh, Omens, and the title track, Abigail. And at number seven, I have the debut from Death, Scream Bloody Gore. Death is my all time favorite death metal band. Um, this is arguably the first death metal album. Some people argue um, Seven Churches by Possessed. Possessed still had a lot of thrash elements. In my opinion, this is the first pure death metal album. Um, I find um, Possessed still has had, like I said, a lot of thrash elements. So, um, you know, without that, there might not have been this album. You can argue that. Uh, but I love this album. It's super heavy, really raw. I like the later death material. You'll, you'll, I'm a huge death fan. So you'll, you'll see coming the years, coming forward. I guarantee every single death album could be my top 10 guaranteed. Uh, with songs like Eternal Death, uh, Zombie Ritual, and um, uh, Denial of Life. Just top to bottom, a killer album. And at number seven, number six, I have the Behemoth album, uh, Appetite for Destruction by Guns N' Roses. I'm not the hugest Guns N' Roses fan, but there's no denying this album's impact and how it changed the whole genre. Uh, they came onto the Sunset Strips uh, scene and just changed that whole demographics over there. And uh, when glam metal was, uh, you know, the, the powerhouse over there, these guys came in with a different look, a little bit different sound, a little bluesier, a little hard rock, and uh, they pretty much changed the game. Um, there's no denying this album. The only reason it's not higher on my list is because I'm, I'm honestly sick of the singles. I've heard them so many times. I just can't stand them. Like at this point, I, I, I can't listen to this album too much anymore because of it's so overplayed. Uh, but you know, Welcome to the Jungle, Night Train, uh, Paradise City, of course, Sweet Child of Mine. Like everyone knows these songs. Uh, great album. It is a perfect album. I think it's an amazing record, but it's just so overplayed. It's not one I really go back to too often nowadays. Once in a blue moon, I'll throw it on in the summertime or something just for nostalgia. And at number five, I have uh, Death Angel of the Ultraviolence. Great album. Uh, debut album from the uh, Bay Area Thrashers. You have to remember when these guys put this album out, they were like 16, 17 years old, really young. 
for how old they were, they put it on a great album. Killer guitar riff, super raw, sounds amazing. Um, yeah, this is a one of my favorite thrash debuts of all time. As soon as I heard, I was doing it in 1987, I knew this was gonna be definitely higher up on my list. Uh, great, great stuff, love this album. Probably one of my favorite Death Angel albums. And they're one, in my opinion, one of the most underrated thrash bands of all time. They should have been way bigger than they were. There's Killer Live. Um, they definitely didn't get enough rec recognition. And number four, I have Among the Living by Anthrax. Um, this is one of my favorite Anthrax albums along with, um, I think the first three pretty much are my favorites. Uh, Among the Living, Spreading the Disease, and Fistful of Metal. It's kind of between this and Fistful of Metal are my favorites. Um, depending on the day, it kind of goes back and forth. This is a solid album, really thrashy, really good stuff before they kind of went to that more sillier kind of sound later on. Uh, with songs like uh, I Am The Law, Among The Living title track, and Indians, really solid album. I still listen to this pretty regularly, and it's killer. And number three, uh, initially when I did this year, I when I, I thought of this album, I went, like, this is gonna be my number one for sure, until I kind of looked at the list of albums that came out this year, and there's a couple that it somehow slipped my mind that I forgot about. Um, but at number three, I'm gonna put Testaments, The Legacy, The Debut. Testament is my all-time favorite thrash metal band. Uh, this debut kicks so much ass, it's not even funny. Like I said, I, I originally was thinking this was gonna be number one for sure, um, but it's killer. Uh, Over the Wall, The Haunting, Do or Die, Alone in the Dark. Just a killer album, really raw. Fucking love Testament, all their stuff is great. One of the most consistent bands of all time. And I was happy to hear that Lombardo uh, was announced to be the new drummer, replacing uh, Hoagland, which is obviously big feet uh, shoes to fill. Uh, but if anyone can fill Hoagland's shoes, it would be Lombardo. So really good. Best lineup in metal right now, in my opinion. It's like an all-star lineup. And at number two, I uh, again, the number one and two were albums that kind of slipped my mind. And then when I was kind of looking through the year online, I'm like, holy fuck, these albums came out in that year as well. And uh, yeah, these kind of bumped Testament down to number three. At number two, I had to put Sabotage, Hall of the Mountain King. This is a fucking ridiculous album. It's got like that old school heavy metal, it's thrashy, it's heavy, it's melodic, killer vocals, killer guitar riffs, killer solos. It has it everything. Um, they're kind of a mix of power metal, heavy metal, progressive metal, and Stando Tracks, Legions, uh, White Witch, Prelude to Madness, Instrumental is really good. The title track, Strange Wings, uh, Strange Wings, incredible album. This is a, a must have in any Metalheads collection. I didn't actually discover this album until much later in my life and it's killer. It's amazing. And uh, yeah, I kind of hemmed and hawed between putting one and two, but before I name my number one, I'm gonna give some honorable mentions here because it was a killer year. So bear with me guys. I'm just gonna quickly go down the list alphabetically here to see what stands out. Uh, Armored Saint had Raising Fear that year, good stuff. Uh, Corner had R.I.P. Uh, what else? Icon had uh, More Perfect Union. Uh, Helix had uh, Wild in the, in the Streets. Heathen had Breaking the Silence, which is a really good album. That almost made my list, it just didn't quite make it. Uh, Grim Reaper had Rocky to Hell, really, really good stuff. Um... Uh, Dio had Dream Evil, not one of my favorite Dio albums, but it's fucking Dio, it's still really good. Uh, Destruction had the Mad Butcher EP that year, I don't really include uh, EPs, but uh, Def Leppard had Hysteria, monster record, 20 million copies, I think it sold. Um, Priest had uh, Priest Live, the live album that year. Uh, Kiss had Crazy Nights, one of their heaviest albums, I'm not the biggest Kiss fan, but a solid album. Uh, Creator had Terrible Certainty. Uh, let me see here. Just kind of looking through quickly, guys. Just trying to see what stood out. I didn't really make a list. I'm never prepared with these, like, honorable mentions. I should be more more prepared with this. Uh, Sodom had Persecution Mania. That's another one that barely didn't make my list. Uh, the Canadian death metal band uh, Slaughter had Strapado. Really good uh, album as well. Love that album. Sepultura had Schizophrenia. Really solid album from them as well. Um, that's their second album. Didn't quite make the list. Uh, Sacred Reich had uh, Ignorance, another big one that didn't quite make the list. Um, Overkill I mentioned. 
Testament, of course. Uh, I think that was it. Oh, Voivod had Killing Technology. That's a killer album. Didn't quite make the list. Uh, another one that was up there. And White Snake's uh, self titled uh, 87 album was a big one for them. I'm not the biggest White Snake fan. It's not my subgenre, but it's good. And uh, number one, guys, I had to put it uh, Candle Mass Nightfall. My favorite doom metal of all time. This is sludgy. It's got the riffs. It's beautiful. It's melodic. The vocals are incredible. This is my this is hands down my favorite doom metal of all time uh, album, and I love the artwork. I love everything about this album. Um, I, I don't know how I almost forgot about this album when I was looking through the list. I'm like, holy fuck, Nightfall came out this year. Um, so yeah, this had to be number one. It's my favorite, like I said, favorite doom album of all time, and everything about it is perfect. I'd give it an eleven out of ten. It's it's an incredible album uh, with standout tracks such as uh, Gothic Stone. Um, the Well of Souls, Black Candles Instrumentals, really good, Bewitched, just a solid album top to bottom. Uh, yeah, it was a killer year for metal. So down below, guys, let me know what your favorite albums from 1987 were. I'm kind of losing the daylight here, um, but I snuck the video in. And yeah, it was a killer album. Like I said, Nightfall, check out some of these albums, guys. Nightfall by Candlemas, Hall of the Mountain King. You guys all know these albums, Legacy, Among the Living. Ultraviolence, Appetite for Destruction, Scream Bloody Gore, Abigail, Pleasure of the Flesh, Taking Over. Amazing stuff this year. All, all amazing. So definitely lift your guy, uh, stuff down below, guys. And until next episode 1988, keep it metal.